Awesome. Welcome, everybody. Uh, for those of you who have not met yet, my name is Caleb Tell, Director of Marketing and Events for Startup Junkie. For those of you who are not familiar with Startup Junkie, we are a mission-driven organization based here in Northwest Arkansas that exists to empower innovators and entrepreneurs. And today, our topic is... Second, sorry, I have an echo. All right. Uh, today, our topic is effective social media strategies for women in business as part of our entrepreneur series. Today's presenter is Martha Lonnegan, my colleague. She's an executive consultant at Startup Junkie, and she has worked with hundreds of small business owners and entrepreneurs in the Northwest Arkansas region for over nine years. Uh, regarding all aspects of growing their current business or maintaining economic viability through marketing campaigns. She is herself a sixth generation small business owner. Bank OZK is the Her Entrepreneur Journey Series sponsor for 2021, and Martha's going to go into more detail about that. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to her. Hello, everyone. So feel free to drop a question or a comment in the chat. <clears throat> or if at any point you can't hear me or can't see my screen, Caleb will be monitoring that. So Caleb and I are actually here at the Startup Junkie offices, which are located on the east side of the square in beautiful downtown Fayetteville. So we're actually in the same room. You just can't see Caleb. He's right behind me. <laughs> so we're excited to be back in our offices again and meeting with folks. I went to one of my first big networking events in Springdale with the Chamber of Commerce last week. And um, we'll be showing you in a little bit on our website where you can go to join in all of the many, many events that we have. We host 150 to 200 events a year. And in fact, this Her Entrepreneur Journey series that Bank OZK so generously sponsors is enabling us to have our first live women's event June the 8th, which will be at the Fairlane Station in downtown Springdale. It'll be an evening event from uh, 5.30 to 7.30. It'll be free, free food and drinks. And we had our first one last year right before COVID and we had about 50 to 60 women come to that. So I'm gonna show you some info on where to sign up. We'd love to have you come and just mix and mingle with other women business owners. And we're gonna have uh, women business owners from Springdale downtown speak to you. We're gonna have food from another woman business owner um, and we hope that you can join in. So I'm gonna go ahead now and start uh, sharing my formal presentation with you. And this is a slide deck. Caleb will email you a PDF copy of it afterwards so you don't have to scurry and take notes if you don't wish to. Then I'm going to switch over live and go to a bunch of websites of local women businesses and show you how they do social media well. And those are all going to be listed on the slides too. So you won't have to memorize all the places where they are and everything. So I'm going to go into the uh, slide deck and Caleb will uh, monitor your um, chats and your questions. You know, when you're on Zoom and you're presenting, you can't see anything. So don't feel like I'm ignoring you if, if you ask an important question, but we'll come back to it. All right, so let me make sure. All right, so hopefully everyone sees the first slide uh, that has the title of our presentation today, effective. And notice the word there is effective. So a full disclosure. I do not have a marketing degree. <laughs> I have a secondary education English degree. I was a high school English uh, humanities and communications teacher. I have a law degree from the University of Arkansas School of Law. I was a business banker and a, a business bank attorney for several years. And then I was with the Walton College, Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development Center. And I started there in 2012, and that's when I learned social media. I learned it from local marketing companies, and I have learned it from, I quit counting at 500. From the over five, six, 700 small businesses I have worked with throughout the eight county region of Northwest Arkansas. So this is where I get my experience. So what I tell you, I'm not saying you must do it this way, you have to do it this way. I really want you to get comfortable with social media. And even if you're doing social media, please understand that just having a Facebook page, having an Instagram with the algorithms, the way they are now, with the way Facebook and Instagram, the way they control the feeds, you really have got to embrace some of these strategies and these methods I'm showing you 
and what I'm showing you is what I have seen work. And so I'm going to talk about some of the issues and the questions that come up with people. I'm never going to judge you. You know, I have people say, okay, I need you to help me with a marketing plan. And that's one of the things we do at Startup Junkie Foundation. We provide free business consulting services at no cost due to our sponsor uh, part, our sponsors who provide grants and funds for us to operate to the public, such as the Walton Family Foundation, Arkansas Economic Development Commission, the Federal Economic Development Administration. We provide our services for free. So that's the great thing about my advice. It's free. You can take it or leave it, but I promise you everything I'm showing you, one, I wasn't the genius who thought of it. Two, it works. I've seen it work in Northwest Arkansas by women business owners. And so I hope you'll get excited about one of the channels um, and find the channel that you like. That's something I'm going to talk a lot about. You're going to see in here. Sorry, there's not a lot about Twitter. I'm not a big Twitter fan. I don't like anything that tells me I can only say so many words, but Twitter is very effective for certain types of marketing. So I follow it, I get involved with it, and I'm gonna give you some tips for it as well. But it's not my favorite. You're gonna see that Facebook and LinkedIn are my favorites. Those are the arenas I'm most comfortable in, and thus those are the arenas and the platforms where I've had the most impact. I want to thank Bank OZK, which is an Arkansas-based bank that has, is based out of Little Rock that is now in over nine states, has over 200 locations. I know the Bank OZK bankers in Northwest Arkansas. They have a huge heart for small business. They operate a U.S. Small Business Administration loan program, which is just vital and so helpful for our small business owners to gain access to capital. And they are real bankers, real people. When we do the series about starting a business and funding a business, they actually have bankers who come online with us. And we are just so supportive of their team here in Northwest Arkansas and how they support women in business. So let's talk about some of the channels. As you can see, Facebook is still the, the monster. Um, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5 billion users throughout the world. YouTube, which is owned by Google, is the, the second most um, popular and used uh, social media platform. So as you forget that YouTube is social media, it is social media. I'm gonna show you some examples of how videos are so powerful and how when you set up a YouTube channel, you have a permanent spot where you can copy the link to a video and then you can put it in your Facebook, you can put it in your Instagram, you can put it on your LinkedIn. And remember, once again, it's owned by Google. So when someone's doing a search for a business name, for a product, for um, uh, an exercise that they need or for tips on how to tie a scarf, if those words are in the title of a YouTube video, they're gonna pop up in the search because Google loves its own baby, which is YouTube. Um, WhatsApp, which is an international messaging system. Facebook Messenger has just become a, a, a monster platform for advertising, for people to use to communicate. Then we go on down, of course, to Instagram. I just saw something last week that said Instagram was actually at like 1.2 billion now. Uh, a very beautiful visual medium. We're going to talk about the power of hashtags um, in Instagram. And then you go on down and there are some that you may have not heard of. They may be international social media channels. And then we get down into LinkedIn, which is one of my favorites. And I will tell you in Northwest Arkansas, LinkedIn, I am amazed at how much it has grown, its use. Um, I do a full two-hour seminar just on LinkedIn, and I can honestly do a three-hour seminar. LinkedIn has grown so much in recent years. I really want to see every business and nonprofits, nonprofit associations need to be on LinkedIn. Let's look at the definition of social media. Notice the word sales is not in here. <laughs> it is not sales media. It is social media. Can it help you sell your product and your services? Yes, but please concentrate on the word social. It is forms of electronic communication through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other content. And content is just the fancy marketing word for the stuff you put on your pages and on your platforms. In regard to women, 
Women are still underrepresented in traditional media, uh, receiving only 38% of the bylines in print, TV, internet, and wire news. Uh, only 15% of Wikipedia contributors are women. There's a lot of information out there about how women, although they're the main users of social media, they are often not always the content creators and the people forming the messages out there. And so I'm a big proponent um, of when you have a cause that you believe in, when you want to support other women, when you want to support other local causes and communities, social media is a place that because the platform is accessible to all people, um, it is a wonderful place to spread the message about yourself as a woman in business or as a woman business owner. So the influence and the restrictions um, are not as high for getting in to the platforms as perhaps getting into the C-suite in the office building. So I think it's vitally important. I have seen women change the world, change their communities and change their lives with their businesses through online uh, social media. Women are very active on social media and they communicate naturally across them. And I love that term, communicate naturally, because social media is the place for your customers and your consumers to get to know you and to get to know your business. It is a great place to be expressive and feel comfortable holding several conversations at a time. And I've got links to these articles and you'll be getting these slides if you wanna read about this more in depth. I love this quote um, from this article in Connect Americas. Female leadership in social networks can tear down old stereotypes and demographic categories, generating a real impact on media, advertisement, and entertainment. And I love this concept of tearing down old stereotypes. Um, in 2017, Governor Asa Hutchinson reclassified minority businesses in Arkansas to include women along with minorities because only 24, 25% of all small businesses in Arkansas are owned by women, and there's no reason for that. We are 50% of the population, therefore it is a goal for the state of Arkansas for 50% of all small businesses to be owned by women. And we can empower ourselves and tear down stereotypes. I went to a coffee connection this week at a woman-owned construction company that does commercial flooring in Rogers, Arkansas, owned by Ryan Hartley, Hartley Flooring. And that's a stereotype. And when people see beautiful, uh, she's a small woman, uh, has endless experience, many decades of experience in construction, owning that business, it helps for people to see women in construction. And when she does posts and there's pictures and she is the owner of that construction company that employs many men at her commercial flooring company, that breaks down stereotypes. We are a very visual people and we like to see what's happening in business and it helps to um, open the doors to other women to break into areas of small business ownership that have been traditionally um, owned by men. Social media is not free advertising. It takes your time. And as a business owner, your time is very, very val valuable. Um, it is not meant to replace a good website. In the, at the end of this, toward when we're doing this, I'm gonna show you start with everyone's website and then show you their social media. Now, I am not saying you are a terrible business owner. You're never gonna be successful. You have failed if all you have right now is a Facebook page or an Instagram. That's okay, I get it. But what that means is that Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook owns Facebook and Instagram, they own your marketing. And you can go to Wix.com or Weebly or Shopify and set up your own website and you can purchase that URL, that domain name, and you own it and you control it. You will pay them a fee, Wix or Weebly or Shopify, to host you on the World Wide Web, but you own your website and it's there 24 hours a day for you to change, for you to alter. So social media is really meant to complement a well done website. It's not a replacement. So do feel free after um, this webinar, you're gonna have my contact info if you'd like to book an appointment with me to talk about setting up your own website. We here at Startup Junkie have a list of marketing companies in Northwest Arkansas that are affordable, that work with our small business owners to help them build websites and we'd be happy to share that with you. Finally, on this slide, you'll see social media is a place to tell your story. And if you are a small business owner, your story matters. 
It's what makes people connect with you. Um, a story I tell a lot is when I'm out traveling and I can't go to my favorite local coffee shop um, that, that's near my house or my favorite bakery that's near my house and I have to hop into a, ch you know, a national chain franchise that's not locally owned, I feel guilty. I'm more than happy to pay a dollar extra for coffee at my local you know, seven brew coffee shop in my neighborhood because it's locally owned versus one out in North Fayetteville at a national chain. I'm more than happy to pay $2 more perhaps for a scone or a croissant at Little Bread Company off the square in Fayetteville because I love Chloe, the owner, and I love that place. And it doesn't bother me a bit that I pay more for that. I know it was homemade, it's fresh, and it supports local business. And I've gotten to know business owners of these local companies because of their social media that leads me to go into their store. So telling your story, it really matters. And some of the most wonderful small business owners I know are the most humble people. It's like, do you ever watch American Idol? And it's the people who are really good that think they're terrible. And then the people who think they're really good that are really terrible, they're the egomaniacs. So small business owners are very humble people and sometimes they don't like the story to be about them, but your business is about you and people want to get to know you and they want to know your entrepreneur story and social media is just the best place to tell that. Social media is our small town coffee shop today. And I'm gonna tell you this story that I have been telling since 2012 when I got in this business of consulting and educating people on social media. My grandfather, Homer Bynum, owned several small businesses in Siloam Springs, Arkansas, which is where I graduated from high school. And one of his businesses was a Chrysler auto dealership. And it was located about 1.5 miles from my grandparents' home. And every morning, my grandmother made my grandfather a pot of coffee and they drank coffee together. And then he would leave and go to the coffee shop at Eastgate Motor Lodge. And he would walk in there and I would go with him sometimes as a child and there were 10 to 15 men. I don't remember ever seeing a woman there and they were local business owners and bankers and they would sit around and talk all morning. He had already had coffee at the house with my grandmother, but he went to that coffee shop almost every morning. And when he walked in, he didn't walk around and hand out pamphlets about the newest Chryslers or Dodge or GMCs. He didn't tell people about specials going on. He asked them how the ball game went last night. What was going on with their business? How were their wives and kids? What was, who's going to play at the football game Friday night? That's what social media is. When you go on Facebook or Instagram, I want you to see that you're talking to your friends and your customers. So yes, he would tell them if he got in a new hot rod car or if a new truck was coming in occasionally, but that wasn't the everyday conversation. He would ask them what's going on with them. And on social media, you should share posts of your neighbors in the strip mall where your business is. You should tell, share posts about things that are going on in your community. You should inspire people with stories and quotes. And then yes, show your products and sell your products. But remember, it is our online community to communicate and be social, not just sales minded. Target consumer or client, are you reaching them? Who are they? And if you don't know who your customer specifically is, it can't just be any human with money because you're gonna have to have a billion dollar marketing budget. You need to have an idea. If your typical consumer is a woman in her thirties, Instagram's awesome for you. If your typical consumer is a retiree, most people over age 60 like Facebook. That's where they tend to gravitate. And you can, you can Google and find a lot of research about the social media uh, channels. If you want to get some idea of what's going on locally and who we see and what kind of stores are there, you can reach out to me. But, but just go on there and look yourself. Go look at your competitors and see what channels they're on. If the three top stores who sell what you sell, none of them have a Twitter account, why would you be on Twitter? Think about that. And I'm going to talk a little bit later about some of the, the demographics for the different uh, social media channels. What do your customers need or want? What are their favorite social media channels? So when you, when you see some of your customers, you can go look and see what other channels you see them on. Ask them. Ask your customers. If a customer comes in repeatedly and says, I see you on Facebook, but do you not have an Instagram? I love Instagram. 
You might think about starting an Instagram uh, page for your business. Um, and look at national examples. This is something I do a lot with my clients when we're doing a marketing plan. If you have a children's boutique that you're opening in Springdale, Arkansas, let's go to look at some of the top children's boutiques in Tulsa, in Austin, Texas, in Dallas. What are they doing on their social media? How, what kinds of posts are they doing? Go look at their Instagram. If it's a very large store that is making, a, you know, probably grossing millions of dollars a year, they probably have a marketing manager. And if that marketing manager is using the same hashtag in every single post that has children's hats, you need to use that hashtag. Those hashtags aren't owned by anybody. Those hashtags can be used by everybody. So when you go look at national companies or larger companies who have, you know have marketing managers, that's their job. Their job is to research those hashtags. Their job is to monitor uh, responses and interaction and engagement. So that's some great free research you can do. Social media uses. Obviously creating awareness of a new business or new, new offerings. I will stop here and say, this doesn't start the day you open. You should start a marketing wave at least a couple of months out. You should have your website set up. You should have your social media set up for your business. If you're getting a loan, as soon as that loan is approved at the bank, that's when you start marketing your business. I love it when I have business owners who I always tell them if you're building out a space or building a building or moving into a space, start documenting the day you get the keys to the building, when the boxes of product come in, when um, the movers come, when the sign goes up, when you put the flower pots outside, get people excited about what's coming. As much as you'll also have a sign in the window at the store, you should be on social media keeping us up with what's going on. Testimonials are vital. I'm gonna show you an example of a company that I have researched and found. They have a bed and breakfast in Austin, Texas, and I use them as an example. It's owned by two women, and they, in my opinion, do the best job there is at customer reviews and testimonials across all channels. People will take the opinion of an individual stranger on the internet over anything you say. People are very, very influenced by the opinions of other people, especially people who are your customers that they feel have given real reviews. Share company news. If you have employees, do spotlights on them for new hires, trips. If, if your team goes to an education event, a, a big tip is get your whole team at the conference, take a picture in front of the conference site that says, you know, um, Insurance Agents of America, San Antonio, Texas. Take a picture of you all at that conference and that sign behind you tells the whole story. And so then you don't have to type a whole bunch of words about we're in San Antonio, we're at this, just you smiling and your team. And then if the whole team goes out to dinner somewhere that night, take a picture of you all at dinner, show your customers. Um, if you go, um, one of the stores I'm gonna show you in a minute, um, uh, Foxtrot Boutique, which is just a couple blocks away from us. And I, I helped Allison, its owner, open years ago. Every year she posts pictures and videos of herself at market and says, she'll hold up two shirts and say, which shirt do you all like better? I'm trying to decide which one to buy for the fall. And, and it makes you feel like you're part of the store and you get excited about a shirt that's not even going to be in her store for three months. Um, you can connect multiple branches of one company together. So if you have multiple locations in different towns in Northwest Arkansas, you, you can set up separate uh, Facebook pages for each site as the stores grow. But if you have one site, it's great to say, here's what's happening in Bentonville today. And here's what's happening in Fayetteville. You know, fun posts like it's snowing in Bentonville, but look, it's not snowing in Fayetteville and putting up side to side photos and reminding people that you have that second location in Bentonville if you're a Fayetteville-based business. Entertainment for engagement. Show your personality. And entertainment doesn't always just mean happy, funny. Entertainment can be serious things. I'm going to show you posts about how small business owners show how they give back to the community. If you give money or have event nights at your store or at your business, or say you have a professional service and you volunteer for local nonprofits and give back, 
you're not bragging and telling people that you give money to a nonprofit. In fact, most people don't ever tell how much they give, but you do have a responsibility as a business owner to give back to your community. And you should show that not only to build affinity to remind people that when they shop local, local gives back, but also to inspire others. And I do hope it gigs a competitor. If they come on your social media and see that you gave in a this month, April, you'll see lots of businesses in Northwest Arkansas supporting the Children's um, Safety Center in Springdale because April is Child Abuse Awareness Month. And I love when I see those pinwheels outside of business. It makes my heart happy that a business I give money to gives back to our professionals who are helping our abused children in our area. And so it should gig your competitor if she or he, their business isn't giving back. Hopefully it will inspire them to do that. Showcase your personal community involvement. I'm gonna show you some business owners who, let me tell you, they show their whole lives on social media. You're gonna see just about every aspect of their life. You can find your balance in that. But showing people, you know, after you get back, if you go on vacation somewhere and there's a store like yours or a, a service company like yours in a town, taking a picture of yourself. Hey, I was on vacation in Florida and look, here's a store that carries the same products I carry back in Bentonville, Arkansas. People love that. They love knowing your story and what you're interested in. And especially, you know, if you have a cycling store, you need to show your customers that you also ride bicycles. And when you go on vacation, you ride bicycles on vacation. And that one, shows them that you're passionate about what you do. Two, you show them that you're learning about what you do and you're staying up on um, the current trends and other cycling communities. Videos, setting up a YouTube channel is very simple. And when I talk about videos, yes, Hiring a local small videographer to take professional videos that you can use over and over and over has a great impact, but you can also make your own videos on your phone and post them to your YouTube channel and then name it. Always remember with YouTube, the title of the video is the only thing that Google reads. And so if your uh, store got in a whole new collection of scarves and you want to do a video showing your clients all different ways to use the scarves, you want the title to say 10 ways to tie a scarf. And then you can put at, you know, Susan's Boutique, Bentonville, Arkansas, but you want the words tie a scarf in the video. Don't just say Susan with a scarf. Those words are what the Google crawlers will read and people who are just searching for how do I tie my scarf will find your video and will be able to see on your YouTube channel, your website link. And then they'll get to know your business even though they weren't maybe even looking for a women's boutique in Bentonville or Springdale, Arkansas. Show your clients how to use your products. Here's a great thing about this. This can save a lot of time. Um, I've worked with medical offices and one of them made a video about how to bathe a child with a cast on because they were spending so much time, you know, when your child breaks their arm and you go to the doctor, you're just hysterical, you're worried about your child. And when you're finally taken care of and the child's in the cast and you're heading home, you're worried about going to the pharmacy and no one's listening to anything the nurse is saying about how to properly bathe the child for the next six weeks in a cast. So these doctor's offices, this one I worked with, would constantly get calls. Now, how do we do <laughs> that bath thing? And so they figured out early on, they went and made a YouTube channel and did a video of a nurse with a baby doll showing people. And so then when people call in, they would say, go to our YouTube channel, scroll down. There's a video, how to bathe your child with a cast, and then the parents could watch it. And so this can also not only sell products and have people find you, but it can also save time for the store. Uh, do videos of you as the, as the owner. If you're at, like I said, market buying products, if you're at a training seminar for real estate agents, uh, real estate agents with videos, that is an incredible way for people to get to know you. Right now, the real estate market is so hot. Um, people are going to choose their real estate agents based upon somebody they want to spend time with, the, someone they trust. So doing short videos about your experience, tips and ideas for getting your house on the market, tips and ideas for 
um, how, how to be an aggressive buyer. Uh, it helps people get to know you. You know, if you're a dog person, have your dogs in the video. People who are dog people like dog people. <laughs> and someone might choose you as a real estate agent simply because you had your dogs in their video. Um, I'm a pug mom. We've always had pugs. And whenever I see videos or pictures of people with pugs, it catches my attention because we're pug people. Uh, testimonials from your customers. Having short videos of your customers talk about how you took care of them, you know, especially something like a home health service. If you have people um, do testimonial videos about your home health service and how you took care of their parents for them and how trustworthy you are and how you, you love their parents and cared for them in their final years so they could stay in their home. The impact of a 30 second video like that is going to have tenfold the impact of putting up a little photo board with a pretty picture of a house and an unknown elderly person saying we offer home elder care. That video is what's going to capture people's attention and get them to trust you with their family members. Remember once again Google only reads words so blogs are highly important. Any basic website that you set up, Wix, Weebly, Shopify, they all have little add-ons uh, where you can make a page of blogs. Blogs do not mean you have to be a professional writer. Just some ideas about a new product. Just some ideas about what's going on with you. Recipes are blogs. You can just post a picture, put a few words in, save it as a blog, and then when you click on that blog on that page, it formulates that URL at the top that's like the URL, the address of a YouTube video, you can copy that and throw it in your Facebook. So if every year you have a special recipe that's for your cooking store about Cinco de Mayo recipes or a special pink cake recipe or pink cupcake recipe for Mother's Day, you have that blog saved. Every year you can go to your blog, hit that entry about Mother's Day pink cupcakes, copy the URL and put it out on your social media. So it's something that works really well to reuse um, the blogs that are there. Plus, if people are searching for on Google Mother's Day cupcakes, um, you can do a blog of, with the you can do video blogs about how to tie a scarf. If you are a person who sells life insurance, you can put in top three reasons people under 30 need life insurance. You can reuse those blogs and people honestly are not gonna remember if you posted that same blog a year ago. So you can reuse that content. If you don't remember anything I talked to you about today, if you scan through the slides when they get sent to you by Caleb later today, um, this is the one slide I want you to remember over and over. If you follow my four E's, and I just kind of made this up to help me remember, and you follow them in order consistently, your social media is not going to get boring. And here's what happens when your social media gets boring. Your reach gets controlled by Facebook, by Instagram. Facebook's concept is, if you're boring and people who have followed your page or liked your page are not liking, commenting, or sharing your posts, we're gonna quit sending them to them. Facebook needs money. They need money to feed that monster beast that it's turned into. Remember that Facebook started out as a place for boys at Harvard to find out if a girl already had a boyfriend so they wouldn't be embarrassed asking her out for a date. That's what Facebook started out as. You don't believe me? Go watch the movie. That's how it started. It was never intended to be for business. And so in about 2010, 2011, Facebook began to see the potential. It told everybody to quit having personal pages for their business and you had to switch over to a business page. And so instead of being friends with a business, you're now a follower with the business and Facebook controls your post reach. So if your posts are not getting liked and commented and shared, Facebook's gonna quit sending them to your followers. You could have 5,000 followers on Facebook, and if your content is not interesting and it's not capturing engagement with your followers, maybe 100 to 200 people will actually see the post in, their feed, in the feed. Because what Facebook would like you to do is pay Facebook to boost it and put it in their feed. 
or pay for ads to go into not only your followers feeds, but every woman under the age, between the ages of 18 and 35 that lives within 30 miles of Springdale, Arkansas. That's a way for them to generate income. So if you will follow these four E's, if you will think about how can I entertain people with a post, a quote, a funny picture, an emotional story. Remember, entertain doesn't just mean funny. When we watched the Academy Awards last week, it wasn't just comedy films, right? We also had documentaries, which educated us. We also had dramas, which made us cry or go, oh, and we had funny movies. So um, we also had movies about love and movies about children. So entertain means make it interesting. Educate people. I worked with a construction company a few years ago that one of their big things they did was these like patterned um, patios. And I had them do a post about the history of concrete. Where does concrete come from? How old is concrete? Who invented concrete? What's it made of? How is it that we're very careful about the concrete we use? And then how do we lay the different kinds of stones or bricks into the patios? I had them do a lot of series of posts and videos showing how they actually make the patios and what goes into it. And I learned a lot about concrete. And you say, well, who wants to care about concrete. Well, if I'm going to pay you $10,000 to come pour my driveway, I want to learn a whole bunch about concrete. And so when people see you doing that, it also shows them that you're educated. You're an expert on concrete in the area. Next E is embrace. Embrace your community. Embrace your business. Be enthusiastic and excited about what you do and, and, and why you have a passion for making candy or providing life insurance to people or selling homes for people or fixing their bicycles. How do, do you and your staff go out in the community and do those things? You know, if you're a real estate agent and you're involved in, in a Rotary Club or a Kiwanis Club, show how you embrace your community and help children in your area because you sell homes to families and families have children. Show what's going on in your town. And if you have a brick and mortar business, I have one of my clients, her store is actually nearby. And every once in a while I'll walk by and I'll say, hi, do you have a brick and mortar store or do you just sell online? And she'll just laugh and say, I haven't done a post about the store lately, have I? And I'm like, no, you know, your unique value proposition is you're a store in downtown Fayetteville. If there's a parade going by, if people are walking by going to the farmer's market, you need to take pictures outside. And I'm going to show you one of these um, in a little bit when I show you some examples of women who do really well with social media in their stores. They actually take their models out and instead of having a formal fancy background in a studio, they take pictures on the street outside the store to remind people that they're part of the community. And then last, yes, we're doing this to make money. So e-commerce, <laughs> show us your products, but show them well, show them in interesting ways. Don't post a picture of the same shirt three times in one week. Don't post a picture of the same plate of food three times in one week. Mix it up, use different angles. Um, uh, there's um, a, a young um, entrepreneur named um, Omar Kasem that has a quesadilla store on Dixon Street. And he's constantly um, with his quesadillas there going out on Dixon Street and holding the quesadillas up. So you've got the food and Dixon Street behind it. And then he has Juice Palm up in Bentonville at the 8th Street Market. And it'll show the juices being held outside and you can see the momentary behind it. And that is a great idea because People who drink cold pressed juices and smoothies are a lot of times outdoor people. So we want the picture outside. We want to show the beautiful day. And then we have the momentary behind it, which reminds people where his store is located. It captures their attention. So if you follow the Z's, every time you do a post, am I entertaining people? Am I educating people? Think about things you know about your business that the public really doesn't know. Educate them about materials in your clothing. Embrace, show them how you're really part of the community. I have small business owners that I follow so many people on social media and I love them. If they have a store with clothing, they'll show how these shoes they wear are great shoes to wear to the ball game because they don't show the dust of walking through the parking lot or how easy they are to slip off, um, you know, or if it's raining that they wore a raincoat from their store at, at their kid's ball game when it started raining and how they don't sweat in that raincoat engagement so 
being a part of the community. This is a very old, this is from, I'm pretty sure 2011 or 2012. It's a children's clothing store that is no longer in business. I don't care. It is one of my favorite social media campaigns I have ever seen. In Fayetteville, Arkansas, we have one of the largest bike rallies in the United States of America called Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue. And um, I kind of, I teach a seminar on how to market your business during Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue because my husband was one of the original bikers that helped start Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue by going to it. He wasn't an organizer, but he was a biker. And we actually went the very first year. There were about 200 motorcycles set up in front of Jose's um, on Dixon Street, which is where JJ's is now. And it was a fundraiser for Meals on Wheels. And that's where it began. And now it's hundreds of thousands of people and hundreds of thousands of motorcycles. And when Fayetteville was getting used to it, there were some businesses that didn't understand the high dollar impact of motorcyclists as tourists. They didn't understand that 60% of the people who come to Bikes, Blues and Barbecue come from it to it from within 200 miles. So they might come back if they like your store, they might come back if they like Fayetteville. Terra Tots was a children's clothing store. They also taught breastfeeding classes and natural labor and birth classes. Um, they like to have natural toys and natural clothing for children. What does that have to do with Bikes, Blues and Barbecue? You say to yourself, how could that possibly have anything to do with it? But you know what? This is when Terra Tots was down on MLK Boulevard, even before they were on the square. Those motorcycles were everywhere. And so they had on their social media, a dress your baby like a biker contest. And they had an absolutely huge response to this. And so um, people were, um, this picture here is actually not from a baby in Northwest Arkansas. That is a pretty well-known picture that's all over the internet, but this is how they were promoting that. And they were asking people to, to dress up their babies as bikers and then post a picture. And then whichever picture got the most likes would win a gift card to Terra Tots. And I absolutely love this story because how can you say you're a local Fayetteville business if you're not in some way associated with Bikes, Blues and Barbecue when it's going on? I have worked with banks and professional offices and given them ideas about having everybody on their staff wear black and orange t-shirts during Bikes, Blues and Barbecue. I worked with a nail salon and the week of Bikes, Blues and Barbecue, if you did black, orange or white nail polish that week, you got 20% off your manicure. Just show the community you're part of it. You can put uh, black, orange, and white balloons out all week if you have a brick and mortar business. If you're a, an insurance salesperson, everybody on your team. Um, one bank that I worked with, they actually got Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue t-shirts made for the bank team. And everybody loved it. Everybody was so excited. That whole week on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they got to wear jeans and their new so-and-so bank bikes, blues and barbecue t-shirts. So take pictures of that, put it on your social media and show the community how you're part of what is going on outside your doors. So these are the main um, social media platforms I'm gonna talk about when I show you some examples in a minute of local small businesses. Um, most of them for this one, because this is our Her Entrepreneur Journey, is about women and their women-owned businesses or their major companies that I have met their marketing people, and I know they are almost all women doing the marketing for these companies. So Facebook and Twitter, the hashtag is high power in Twitter, so we'll look at hashtags and talk about that. Instagram, the picture quality matters. I will say if you have a lot of customers who follow you on both Facebook and Instagram, they get a little tired sometime if the posts are exactly the same. So my advice is mix it up. Facebook is a great place to share articles about education for your customers, about your industry, about your products. It's a great place to post like action videos. It's a great place to post big pictures like when you have a big event um, that you attend or a big event going on in your store, you can take that same picture, say it's a picture of um, you're having a sale and you've never had the store so full. And, and right now everybody's kind of excited to see people going back out to stores and events. You can post that picture, but then you can take a more interesting picture and 
put it right behind a flower or a tree or zoom in on just one little girl who's eating the candy in your store and she's got the chocolate all over her mouth. Think about for Instagram, making it a more personalized picture, a different angle, a single subject, just something. So you can have a post on both your Facebook and your Instagram about the same event going on in your store or the same event you're attending, but just try to think a little differently for Instagram about making it a little more artistic or a little more interesting. YouTube, I've already talked quite a bit, but really want to, I'm going to show you some examples of like our YouTube channel we have at Startup Junkie. Um, it is, and, and this webinar will be on that YouTube channel so you can see how that helps us with our customer service. I have people after almost every webinar I do reach out via email or if they're people who know me, they text me on my work cell. I missed your webinar today. I'm so sad. I really needed it, but I had a customer or I had a flat tire. And you know what I say? Not a problem. Go to our YouTube channel. We have it stored there. Then we also during COVID last year, redirected some of our grant funds for marketing because we weren't able to have our live events and parties and we went to a formal studio and filmed some very formal webinars on lean canvas for business planning for starting a business lending options leadership and so sometimes when i have meetings with people and we don't have time to spend on all the topics I want to talk to them about starting a business, I'll send them a link to that video I did. And I'll say, now here is an hour and a half video that's just everything A to Z about starting a business. Why don't you watch this at your leisure? So having a YouTube channel can help you with your customer service. Um, if you've got a product that's, you know, if you have a hobby store and people have had trouble putting together a race car or putting together, if you sell furniture that comes in a box, have one of your employees make a video very slowly putting together and showing all the intricate details of putting that table together, then post that video on your YouTube channel. And then when you sell those same outdoor tables next year, you can copy that URL and throw it in your Facebook. And it not only shows the product, but shows how to put it together and highlights that special customer service that your store offers. We have people who will help show you how to put that table together versus good luck if you order it from Wayfair. Nobody at Wayfair is going to get on the phone and walk you through putting that table together. LinkedIn, I'm going to show you some examples of some women in business and women business owners who do LinkedIn well. And LinkedIn is just one of my favorite platforms. It doesn't have as much noise and negativity as some of the other channels do. But I will also tell you, you get what you give. And if you're a positive person and you're thoughtful about your posts, you, my business owners don't report to me that they have major issues with negativity as long as they stay away from negative hot topics. But LinkedIn, because it's for business, absolutely, if you're a woman working in a business career, if you're a woman business owner, if you're the director of a nonprofit, LinkedIn is where you want to be. And I have nonprofit directors say to me all the time, well, why would we be on LinkedIn? And I say, well, do you need volunteers for your group? Yes. Do you like money for donations? Yes. Well, then I think you should be on the platform that, um, close to 70% of all college educated professionals in the United States are on. Great place to recruit them for donations. Great place to recruit them for volunteerism. It's an ideal platform for that. But I see so many nonprofits that do not have a business page set up on LinkedIn. So if you're involved with a nonprofit or work for one, please get on LinkedIn. It is an excellent platform for you. Testimonials, review sites. Um, if you are a service provider like a spa or a, a hair salon, if you are absolutely a restaurant or a bar or a candy store, you want to have reviews on especially Yelp. Yelp is huge. If you have a bed and breakfast, if you um, have a travel company, obviously you want to be on Travelocity, Foursquare, encourage people to do reviews use for you. Probably the most impactful place that you want to ask people to do reviews is on Google. So that when your Google business listing box shows up on when people do a search 
and they your name pops up and you've got that Google box. And if it's a brick and mortar store, it should have pictures of your store, hopefully you with pictures of your store and all your hours and info. That's the, the number one spot you want to have those reviews, but also on your Facebook page. Or if people give you a review, just take a video. If someone comes in the store and buys a hat and they're twirling around in the store because they're so excited, say, hey, can I take a video of you with this new hat and have you talk about how much you love the hat? A 15 second video of a, of a woman smiling, thrilled with her new hat she bought or her child with the hat and posting that on your Facebook is just gold. Um, people will buy things based upon the reviews of others 10 times more than you just telling them a product's good. So we want the Google reviews in the search box. We want Facebook reviews, Yelp, Bing, uh, for Bing, Bing has a, so Google is the main search engine, right? But Bing is still out there. So if someone does a Google review for you, it's not going to show up in Bing, but Bing will pull Yelp reviews. So that's why I especially tell my, my restaurants and, um, my bed and breakfast and, and tour, especially tourism related businesses I work with, you want Yelp reviews because if people use the Bing search, those are the reviews that show up there. Websites need to have a page with testimonials. Ideal is a picture of the customer and at least their first name and a quote from them. Really ideal is videos. Watch video testimonials. So when you're building that website, you want to have a page or a spot where there are blog posts and a page or a spot where there are reviews from customers for people to see. I'm going to show you this one real quick just because it is probably my all-time favorite. Um, this is from several years ago. It is still, in my opinion, one of the lowest cost, highest sales reviews ever. It was a mom. She's a woman who was actually a youth minister at a church. And she made this video just to be funny. She worked with kids and she's a Star Wars fan. And from the moment she made this video and posted it out, Kohl's, which is where she bought this Chewbacca mask, sold out throughout the country. It became one of the biggest selling items in history. And the last time I checked this review of hers, it had been seen and watched at least 12 million times. And I just wanna show you this really quickly to show you the power of being a real person and the power of reviews. So hopefully when I switch to this, it's gonna show up. So Caleb will help me see if by chance it doesn't. Can y'all see the video, Caleb? It's still on my slide. It's still on my slide. Okay, so I'm gonna have to. All right, how about now? All right. Now, do I have to turn this up? Sorry, y'all, I don't do this that often with videos. Can you all hear it? Coles today. I had to make a couple returns. Ah, stuff didn't fit. Surprisingly, it was a little too big. Thank you. I know some of you may be thinking the opposite. Shame. No, no, no shame. It's all love. It's all love. Okay, so here's what I found when I was at Coles. And I'd like to say that I bought this for my son that would really, really want it. And let's be honest, he'll probably confiscate it from me. Confiscate, that's a word, right? Okay, so he'll probably take it from me. Okay, I'm gonna pause it here because she is just hilarious. You can see this is a real woman. She's not a spokesperson. She wasn't paid by Coles. She was doing this to entertain her friends and family. Um, but I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because she spends a bunch of time leading us up to the fact that she bought this Star Wars mask for her son, but it's going to actually be for her. However, like crazy, I don't even care. Okay, this is gonna be worth it, I promise. Here's what, <laughs> I'm having trouble getting it. Okay, patient, patient. All right, we're doing good, we're doing good. Okay, so this is what I got. Once again, this is for me, not for Duncan, not for Cadence. I mean, I'll let them play with it. I'm not a bad mom, I'm not a jerk, but, in all honesty, at the end of the day, it doesn't go in their toy box. It goes in my room. So here we go. I got to take off my glasses for it. <laughs> oh, naturally. Okay, here we go. So, yes. Now watch when my mouth actually moves. <laughs> That's not me making that noise. It's the mask. Here, listen. All right, so I'm going 
going to switch back to my presentation. Uh, this became, you can actually um, research this on, uh, in Google, and you will find that this became one of the biggest selling items in uh, the history of uh, Kohl's and one of the biggest selling items they'd ever had. And it was because of this woman's review that, that Coles picked up. She ended up getting paid by Coles. She became a spokesperson for them. She went on to start her own blog and her own um, support for women's group. And she was a youth minister and it just launched an absolute entire um, career for her in, in that way. So. It's just one of the funnest reviews and it was just by a real person who just really wanted to um, have fun and promote her product. And so if you can get someone to do something like that for you, it is a, a great way to sell a product. All right, I'm gonna try to get back to my presentation. Sorry, I'm not really great at switching screens. All right, hopefully you can see the presentation again now. So I'm gonna go in in a minute, the last 30 minutes of this, I'm gonna show you Northwest Arkansas examples. But uh, before I uh, do that, I do want to mention some of the networking and support groups locally that are here for uh, women in business. Can you see my slides, Caleb? I can't get it to go full screen though. I don't know why it's being so cranky. From current slide. I don't know why. Uh, up at the top, uh, further up, we're going to discuss the save and undo. Uh-huh. Further up. Uh, don't I just go slideshow from current? Sorry, I can't get my slideshow to go again to full screen. So over here. Go back to where you were. Yep. Click that right there and see what that does. That right there. Aha, there, a little icon. Thank you, Caleb. <laughs> Sorry, it's a lot easier for y'all to see like this. So, um, oops. Oh, no, I don't like this. All right. So, I do want to show you this because this is a series for women, and I want this is not my networking um, webinar that I do for women, but I'm going to have this slide in the packet that's going to be emailed to you. We have a lot of support groups for women in networking, and when you attend these support groups and these community groups, a lot of times they talk about social media. It's a great place to meet other women who are business owners that are good at social media to get advice from them. It's good to be as a woman in business involved with other women in business. So it's a great content post. If you go to win, which is a monthly luncheon in Rogers, or if you go to a quarterly event with woman run, um, run by the Wright Lindsay Jennings firm and Meredith Lowry, who's a big supporter of all women in business. She's a local attorney. Um, the Asylum Springs Women in Business Group, even the small towns form their own women business groups. When you go to these events, take a picture of yourself and post that on your social media that you're working with other women professionals and other women business owners. Um, Hustle and Heels is uh, presented by the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce and they have multiple events every year, but it's open to anyone. Conexion de Negocio Latinos is a wonderful group run by a woman named Irma in Springdale for Hispanic and Latinx owned uh, businesses and a lot of women are involved with that group. And then next, any XXT is a new women's group that has been started by a friend of mine, Amy Robinson, and she has been known throughout the region. She works at the Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development Center. She herself is a business consultant. This is a group that's going to have public events. It's going to have paid events. You can uh, buy memberships and receive mentoring and counseling and help um, supporting you on whatever journey you're in, on as a woman in Northwest Arkansas. So I just like you to know that there are so many of these out there to support our women in business. And then I mentioned a couple of national ones also. So I'm getting ready to switch over to the internet and I'm going to show you websites. And these are all women business owners that I have worked with that I have seen them learn social media on their own. None of them, well, there's one who is a professional marketer. So we, like I told you, we wanna look at the professionals too, but the rest of them are self-taught and they tell their story. 
Uh, this slide is going to give you a lot of examples. So like if you need to hop off now and you can't watch the examples I give, just go type in all of these businesses and look, start at their, at their website and then go to their Facebook and their Twitter and their Instagram and scroll through and see how well they do. Notice I have Nabholtz Construction there. Nabholtz is an Arkansas-based construction company, regionally known, massive, multi-million dollar projects. They do their own in-house marketing. I have met, I met their team a few years ago. They actually came up when I worked at the Walton College and did a seminar for me for construction companies on social media. And two of the three people on their team are women and they do it all in-house because they want it to really tell the story of the Nabholtz family and the Nabholtz commitment to being a community business. I also have some others on here that are marketing companies. There are some psychologists, psychiatrists on here, another local uh, construction rental company, Hug and Hall. I uh, got to know some of their teams several years ago through a marketing company and I did some consultations with them and they have uh, client engagement, social media uh, workers there and they are all women. And it's all about telling the story. So I like to show on this list, you see here, I have doctors, I have construction companies, I have psychologists, I have boutique stores, I have sports groups. I talk in here about having a hashtag for your event or your fundraiser so everybody can use the hashtag and see each other's pictures. So I'm going to get out of the formal presentation now and go onto the internet and show you some examples of what people do and what works and why I promise that embracing social media, finding your comfort level, finding the platforms that you really like and getting good at those platforms and not trying to do every single one can help you as a woman tell your story, um, help you empower other women, gain customers, break down stereotypes. I mean, obviously we've got something going on in Arkansas that half the women in our state aren't owning our small businesses and we want to, we want to change that. And I wanna thank again, Bank OZK for sponsoring our Her Entrepreneur Journey series for the whole year of 2021. Um, we're going around the region. I'm gonna be going to Harrison, Arkansas with the Her Entrepreneur Journey in June. And then June 8th, I want you to go to our startupjunkie.org website and you can go to programs and events or you can look us up on Facebook. We have events. And June 8th, we're gonna have a celebration of women in business in Springdale and it's gonna be free food and drinks all on Bank OZK. And I hope you can, can join us there. So I'm now going to get out of this screen and I'm going to look at some of the sites I have saved. I'm hoping when I go back to here, there we go. All right. So Caleb, help me out. Can you see the Natalie Creates website? Uh, Freckled hand for us. Yes. Okay, great. So this is one I start with, and Natalie knows I do this. Um, Natalie and Luke Freeman are just one of my favorite married couples of the world. Um, I got to know them in 2013-14. I was working at the Walton College Small Business Center, and Luke was a student at the University of Arkansas, and he's a horticulture major. And Natalie was, I think she was about 21 or 22 years old. And you can see on this screen, she was doing canning and preserving workshops at her little house in West Fayetteville. And women would come to her and she started writing a blog and her blog was called Natalie Creates. And so you can see she would have people come to her house. She loved canning. She loved old fashioned things. She loved the idea of making her little simple home um, something that she loved. She organized women. She got a little Airstream trailer and they would do workshops in that. They would go on trips together. These are pictures of, like I told you, her husband Luke was a horticulture major. This is their little garden out at their house. And she starts this blog and then it begins to grow. She decides to open an online store. And so in the blog, you can go down here to the bottom. And this is an example for you of how great blogs are at spreading the message and um, showing the message of what you do. You can mix pictures, you can do recipes, 
and you can have short words. It doesn't have to be a super long story. So you can go back through these blogs of Natalie's. This is from 2016 when they started. And then people began to say, where'd you get that bowl? Where'd you get that tablecloth? Where'd you get that pillow? And that led them to start an online store, originally called Freckled Hen Farmhouse. And they've now rebranded and just made it shorter because a lot of their goods don't just have to do with gardening and having a little farm like they do. And so they then set up an online store and started selling interesting goods uh, for people to find that were like she you can get like an old-fashioned set of tupperware dishes from the 1970s and mixing bowls and all kinds of different she just would find things that she loved and couldn't find anywhere else and put them online so they have the website and remember what i told you about is we want to start with a website always and so they have a fabulous website all they have stores they have multiple stores now so you're going to always have that good contact info they obviously, because it's become very extensive, have all different uh, types that you can choose from. So obviously a well done store. But then here is where we also begin to see how Natalie kept Natalie Creates in her persona and then blended it into her business. And Natalie was one of the first people I knew that really saw in 2012, 13, 14, the power of Instagram. And so they set up, of course, this one is still the Freckled Hen Farmhouse, which is kind of their other brand for uh, their Instagram. And obviously it has their products, but then you begin to see there she is. There's Natalie, right? And so she is always a part of her business for years, did it all on her own. There's pictures of employees, different products. And now we begin to see they started with a little store down on Martin Luther King Boulevard that was about 600 square feet. Then they spread to this store on College Avenue, Freckled Hen, and then they rebranded it Gift because just recently this year, they opened this large scale store on College Avenue, which is Freckled Hen Home. So they have grown over time from wreath making and canning shops in their house to pop-up events and festivals to a little tiny store people could pick up goods and the reason that people wanted to come and pick up the different goods and things is because they got to know natalie on social media they read her blogs they saw her posts they got to know her as a person and they wanted to meet her and that's what led them to start the store and so Natalie Creates shows snapshots of she and Luke's life from the beginning. Here you can see they shared when they found out earlier this year they were having not one baby, but two babies. And pictures of them on dates. And these are pictures of their home. Her showing, she's always had pictures of her home, of her goods in her home. And then here we begin to see they just had the twins. So this is an example living on social media, telling her story is what has built Natalie and Luke's business to where it is now that they have the Freckled Hen Farmhouse, the large scale store. They also have behind it a cottage, Freckled Hen Cottage. It had a little house behind it. And so it's also a guest house. And so you can see we're beginning to have women to come and stay at the house and go to the store. And then their other small original store is still over, um, is Freckled Hen, uh, is uh, Freckled Hen Farmhouse, the gift store that's still on college. But throughout it, it is telling their story. Here's a give back on this Facebook one. Freckled Hen gives back, 10% of your purchase goes to the Northwest Arkansas Children's Shelter. And so you can see them giving. They announced when they bought the store before they even had put their own sign up, they announced here's the cottage we're buying, here's the store, keeping us updated with everything that's going on at Freckled Hen and letting us know. Having videos um, like this one, 
imagery, things to keep it interesting, not just showing the product, but having little videos, having the store photos, keeping people updated about what's going on, different gift selections. And you can see here how sometimes like this one, how it's a blow up of the cups very close so you can read the quotes. And then that one is probably going to be on our Instagram. So a photo like that is something that's more like what, especially you're going to want to see on Instagram and celebrating their other goods. As you go through here, Natalie is one to really look at, especially for Instagram. You can see where she's also become an influencer. She has people pay her to also on her Natalie Creates, which is just her as a person. You can see posts she does for Aldi's for a, um, here's one where she's, obviously this is a post for Aldi's. She's showing where she went to Aldi's and bought all of her food for the week. So this can expand your potential as a woman business owner to not just have the social media for the business, but you can build a, group, a brand personally that people want to be connected with. Natalie shares about um, her health journey and, and the food she eats and about clothing challenges she has and about being outside and about her marriage and all of these things. So this is someone who has built her business because she started out at age 22 and she dug in and she learned social media and she learned how to be a part of the online community and build a brand with people. And then look like here on this one, uh, you can see some of the uh, hashtags she uses. She's constantly researching and looking for ideas. So look at this picture here. I love this. Oh, Christmas tree, wrapped gifts, presents under tree, Fayetteville, Arkansas, finding NWA, N-W-A-R-K-N-S. These hashtags, when Instagram first came out, you would have to go type in a hashtag to see all the posts around that hashtag. A couple of years ago, Instagram finally let us just start following a hashtag. So I can now follow hashtag N-W-A-R-K and my feed automatically shows me everybody who uses that hashtag. Plus I follow the certain businesses or certain people. So Instagram, Facebook, they've evolved over time to be more um, receptive to customer demands. And so this has made the hashtag even more important. So if there's a hashtag that people who buy your products or use your services consistently follow, you want to put that hashtag in there often because if they're following the hashtag, it's actually gonna pop in their feed even if they don't yet follow your store or your business yet, okay? So uh, then I want to switch, I wanna show you another one. So that Natalie is a great one to go look at her Instagram, her Facebook, she has over 150,000 followers if you put all of her Instagram and her Facebook accounts together. So she's obviously built a huge following on social media um, and is so good at it, she doesn't have to pay for sponsored posts because her posts are going in our feeds naturally because we love what she do does. This is a woman, Jennifer Kalo Rusin. She has, this is her website. She is someone who helps when you go to her about page, she tells her history about helping people serve shoppers in the retail space, both brick and mortar and online, innovative products and brands. So she does marketing. She sat at the table with $100 million CEOs helping them create brands to retail. She has experience helping people get their products into Walmart. So hers is all about service and what she does. And so it's about selling goods to Walmart, something that could be a very boring calculated thing. But you see on her website, she has her picture. It's about her telling her story. She notice here how those just kind of came up, those testimonials to capture attention people telling you that this woman helps them. She's very knowledgeable about marketing and e-commerce, helped us with our product at Walmart. And then down here, you see her chosen social media outlets, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is where I first got to know her. Uh, she does a fabulous job of you know, doing a blog post on her website, having it saved there, then copying it, moving it over here to her LinkedIn. And if you're not real familiar with LinkedIn, a way to see what someone does is you pull up their profile, 
you can click see all activity and it's also helpful for you to know when you get active on LinkedIn if you like other people's posts it's going to show up in the activity feed that you liked it you can go here and notice there's an article section and this is a blog that she wrote and put on her website. So when you go to her website and click blogs, this blog is there. Do you run the same way you go through life? She has copied that blog URL and posted it in her LinkedIn. And now she has a great LinkedIn post as well. It's just a blog off of her website. She can also take that blog entry. So when you click on this here, see here, this is one in case some of you aren't real familiar with URL, you know, people just say the website address. But this is the URL. So see how you can copy that. And so that's off of her website. And then you can just paste it um, into uh, your Facebook box, or I'll just show you an example. Here is my Facebook. So if I just love that post to hers, I copied it, I can paste it, and boom. Now notice it from LinkedIn, it generates the post like that because it came off of LinkedIn because that's where the URL for it is versus if I go here to her website, sorry, I've got to remember where I was. Yep, sorry, I want to show you this. Here we go, I want to go back to her website. You can go here to her blog and let's look at this one. Oh, this is one she also sent. I got this one right here. I follow her on um, her newsletter. Let me do a better example for you of this. There we go. So if you copy the blog, sorry, I got ahead of myself. So she copied it like this and put it in LinkedIn and it made the pretty blog picture and post, right? But if you copy it off of LinkedIn and then try to go on another platform, it doesn't translate over with the picture as well. So I'm glad I made that mistake to show you that, to remind you of that. And so then you erase the address. And so I could share this, love this blog from Jennifer uh, Rusin, has a great message, et cetera. And so you have this blog on your website that you've created and you can copy it. And you, if it's about Christmas, if it's about Cinco de Mayo, if it's about getting ready for tax season, you're able to create that and reuse it over and over um, as, a, as a blog post. And then other people can also copy it and share it. And then this is a great way if you want to educate people about you know, different types of roses, you can go out on Google and type in rose types for 2021 and see what's popular in roses. You can go here. This would be a blog post, new rose varieties for spring. You could copy that and paste it in your box. Say you sell roses at the Fayetteville Farmer's Market. You could copy that link and go put it in your box. And people say all the time, sometimes they'll, they'll ask me, they'll say, well, I don't know if I should use other people's um, um, blog posts. Should I post that out of mine? If they've got it posted as a blog on their site, as long as you're not posting it and then telling people they have to pay you $5 to read it, they're gonna be thrilled you shared their blog post about the best roses for 2021 because then people might come to them and buy the roses from them. And it's like Jennifer Rusin. If, if you find a blog post of hers that's about empowering women and how to balance family and work career and you post that to encourage her, it's obvious it's her post. You're not trying to say it was you. And then maybe someone who's wanting to sell a product to Walmart reads her blog post and contacts her to hire her. So she would be happy to, to, to have you do that. Um, this one on the screen now is grassroots taxes. This is a woman, Diane Haggerty. She is an accountant. That is a very beautiful picture of her. And, you know, what could be more personal than someone doing your business books and your business taxes, right? So even if you're an accountant or a, a doctor or, or an insurance agent, people want to see who you are. They want to know what you do. And here she has her, her about section that tells what she does. She has a tax tips blog. 
And these, uh, some of hers, I've been sharing a lot on my social media. So you can see here where the blog posts are, you can click on them and then paste them like I showed you in your Facebook. She does this on Facebook, on um, LinkedIn. And, and she has some, some really funny um, things um, that she does in her. She uses uh, funny uh, quotes and, and, and gigs people sometimes about you know driving her crazy with not keeping their receipts up together. Um, here's one that says, you're a what enrolled agent? What does that mean? Yes, I'm an enrolled agent. That means she can negotiate with the IRS for you. This is Diane, she's my CPA, me, no, I'm an enrolled agent, them, huh? What does that mean? So she uses, you know, she's as, as a person who does accounting and taxes, those are kind of heavy issues. She uses a lot of personality with that to get people to connect to her. And accounting is still a field that women, you know, years ago was, was a male dominated field. So I love hers is one example that I would love for you if you do professional services to go look at how she does her social media. Um, another one I want to show you here is like I told you about Nabholtz Construction. So Nabholtz Construction does multi-million dollar projects. They build schools and office buildings, major projects. When you go to their Facebook, when you go to their website, this is what you see, people. And that is for two reasons. And I have talked to the marketing team at Nabholtz and they will tell you this. The number one challenge facing them is not getting contracts, it's keeping employees construction and right now the construction industry and the restaurant industry. You want to show people on your social media that you care about people, that you're a great place to work. Then twofold by having these pictures of people showing like here, community service, having cookouts, supporting local uh, businesses, supporting local groups. As I'm scrolling through here, you can see all the things that they do to help the community, raising money for childhood cancer. When Nabholtz goes into a school to bid on building a new school, they can go in front of a school board. And school board members are elected by the community and they're people and they make decisions about who gets the contract to build that school. And so Nabholtz has become so big, they like to remind people they're a family. They're a family owned business based in Arkansas. Yes, they're in multiple states and yes, they do multi-million dollar projects. But I'm telling you, if social media and telling a story is important to a multi-million dollar company like Nabholtz, it should be important to you and your single sole proprietor marketing company you're running out of your house, your small pop-up store that you have, your booth at the Fayetteville Farmer's Market, or your little boutique store that you want to open someday, or your online business telling your story and having it out there. Now, I'm not saying you have to be like Natalie and have pictures with your babies at the hospital. I love it, that's Natalie. Um, and to my knowledge, she's never had any problems sharing her story or bad things happen to her. That's the way she does it. You can do you, all right? So maybe you're comfortable showing pictures of yourself after you get home from vacation that you were on the beach and you visited an insurance agent company like yours while you're on vacation. And that's as far as you wanna go. Um, but I do hope you will get more comfortable and see if major corporations like Nabholtz are sharing stories. And like I said, two of the three people on their marketing team when I met them were women who are good at sharing stories. It helps people connect with your company at any different type and level. Um, Hug and Hall is one that uh, does rental. I mean, how much more boring can you be than rental of equipment, right? But look here at theirs. That they're, they're, Hug and Hall is an Arkansas-based company. They have a branch out in um, Tawnytown. And here, yes, they put pictures of their equipment, but they also celebrate holidays. You see constantly pictures of their employees, reminding people that they're a real place, real people that want to help celebrating their clients and their customers. And so I show you this to show you that at every level, we want to be celebrating um, women um, as telling our stories about what we do. I wanna end with here with Jennifer K. Uh, Rusens on the testimonials, success stories. And these are all the people, notice how she has the pictures of companies she's worked with. And look at these. I love how sometimes her testimonials are just a couple of, of words from people. 
Um, you know, Jenna is one of my go-to Amazon Walmart management agency choices. It doesn't have to be a whole big story. She also has here uh, the different products lines and companies that she's worked with. I love this example here. It catches your eye. Notice how she puts in pink. She will make sure you are successful. And then more block letters with kind of the facts. Jen is very knowledgeable in the field of marketing and e-commerce sourcing, and then has the name and the name of the company of the person who gave her that testimonial. And so you want to have these on your website because maybe some people don't do Facebook or don't do Instagram. So we need the same branding and message across the board on all of our channels that we have, but we can place them in different spots and reuse them in, in different places. So. Um, we're getting toward the end of our time. Um, my number one thing that I want you to come away from this is choose one channel. If you just really like Facebook and, and you're still not real sure about Instagram, then go all in on Facebook. Make it interesting. Follow those four E's I gave you. Entertain people, educate them, do sell e-commerce and embrace your community. Um, then think about looking at your competitors, people who do what you do well. What other channels are they on? Maybe look at getting into those channels. Um, on the, the slides um, that you're going to get from me, I give you some examples of local Northwest Arkansas and some major Arkansas companies that are really good on all those channels. It does take time. It's not just going to come naturally to you at the beginning. You need to research it, have a plan, and stay consistent. People will ask me, what time of day should I post? When should I post? How often should I post? That depends on your business. The posting calendar for Nabholtz Construction is going to be totally different than for you as in a local insurance agent. You know, I tell my store owners when all the new product comes in for spring, yes, you may do three posts a day, showing people all the new clothes that are there. But then the next week, it just may be one post a day. Um, if a parade of Volkswagen bugs goes by your business and you've already done two posts, still go out and get a video of the Volkswagen bug parade going by your business unexpectedly because that's fun and that's interesting and people are going to be interested in that. So the social media should reflect the business, what's going on with the business. If you're at a night event, celebrating a local nonprofit that your whole team has helped for a year, then you're going to do a post at night. It's more interesting to see that you're there live and you're a part of this wonderful community event than waiting till the next day at 1030 a.m. because some blog post writer told you that 1030 a.m. on Thursday is the best time to do a post. So, you know, be natural with it, be real, tell your story. And I will tell you in Northwest Arkansas, the community responds and it loves to get to know its business owners and it will come back and it will support you and we saw a lot last year in the COVID crisis that our small business owners who were connected to their customers with a good reliable website and social media to get the word out about what they were doing and what changes were in place and what they were offering are those that were able to pivot quickly and still respond to their customer needs. So, um, Caleb, do I haven't been able to see the screen. Do we have any um, questions that have come in? Um, I have one that you addressed regarding, um, she shared different information pictures on different social media outlets. Mm -hmm. content throughout. I also dropped in my thoughts on that to address okay. that as well. Great. Um, JC said, Martha, I love that you have 25 tabs open just like <laughs> I'm a busy, busy woman. <laughs> we don't have any comments on okay. Facebook. All right. Well, thank you all for attending. And like I said, um, I'm going to be sending the, all those slides to uh, Caleb in a PDF. And it lists all those businesses that I looked at that I just suggest to you to follow. And I will tell you, all those people will love for you to follow them and see what they do. Because I got news for you. Natalie Freeman did not invent hashtags. Jennifer Rusin didn't invent having a picture and different fonts and different colors with her testimonials. All people who do social media follow other social media people. We follow trends, but yet you give it your own twist. You give it your own personality by putting it in there. So go out there and, and study your competitors because I promise you when you open your business and start doing well, they're going to 
to follow and study you. Um, and then look out in other markets like Tulsa, Austin, Kansas City, and even if you want to be cutting edge, go look what a business like yours is doing in San Francisco and see what's coming. Um, and just be, don't be scared to tell your story and try different things. And reach out to us at Startup Junkie. My, my information will be on the last slide if you want to talk more in depth about your social media or ha have help with a marketing plan and follow our events. We will be having a marketing plan workshop. Um, we had one planned last year and it got canceled during COVID and we'll be doing that again later this year. And we have lots of webinars and seminars about social media from all different perspectives all year. So thanks again to Bank OZK for sponsoring this. And I hope every one of you comes to our June 8th networking party um, at the Fairlane Station. So thank you all for attending.